Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Fake Nerds Watch for Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, I am Brandon T. McClure. Uh, with you along this journey, your only consistent host on this journey through Star Trek uh, over on the Fake Nerd Podcast family of podcasts. But with me today is my good friend, Xander Hake. How are you, sir? Hi, I'm great. I'm just vibing, very excited to talk about Star, uh, Star Trek. I I was this close to saying Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different show, Xander. It's a different show. It's a different um, show. So this season of Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're here to talk about Star Trek Lower Decks. Episodes three and episode four were doubling up so far. It seems to be the best way to do Lower Decks. It's mm-hmm. lower show. Hold on. I maybe have to sneeze. I do. It's gone. No, all I'm right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep all this in the recording. Um, so, yeah. So we're going to be talking about episode three. In the Cradle of Vexalon, written by Brandon Williams, with art by Ben M. Waller. And Something Borrowed, Something Green, directed by Bob Suarez, written by Grace Para. So, let's best way to do this, jump right into the first episode. So, episode three, In the Cradle of Vexalon. Xander, what did you think of this episode? I think for a show that has made a very good point of uh, robots and AI uh, always being the uh, behind the curtain evil overlords. Um, it was kind of nice to see like just a, uh, Oh, this AI is fine. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of the, it's kind of interesting watching this one because like peanut hamper, right. Is, and uh, mm. there's the Jeffrey Coombs character in this season and uh, two from two seasons ago, like all there's like, we've seen the Daystrom Institute, and it's just the wall of of evil AIs. Um, and this show really frequently will uh, make a point of doing like evil AI. I think even think they revisited uh, a planet from the from Star Trek the original series, um, uh, an AI that they had to deal with. And it, so, like when you get to this to this planet, it, it's really strange. Finally, just being like. This one's the good one, actually. This one's the good one. We, we've fun. done a lot of bad ones. This one's the good one. <laughs> it can work, we swear. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff in this episode. Uh, mostly, not this is not Star Trek's first ring ring world, but mm-hmm. it, 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 it was kind of nice to see another one. I think it's its second or third. Um, but this is something that we've seen in like Mandalorian and Halo. Um, yeah, obviously Halo. Um, they even use a lot of Halo imagery with like the the we see the horizon, the other the other end of the ring in this. Yeah, one, which is, that's yeah. Cool. It's a uh, it's it's a sci fi trope I I like. Yeah, it's it's marred in actual like you know possibility and 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 all that. And, uh, it's 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 cool. I like Ring Worlds. So it's, yeah. What are you gonna do? Um. But yeah, no, uh, I I really enjoyed the episode. Um, I think it was I think it was a lot of fun. It was it was one of those where like I feel we saw um, again, which seems to be like the maybe the trend um, that the the B story seems to be focusing more on character growth, while yeah. the A stories are. I mean, and they'll they'll flip back and forth. Um, but I think more often than not, you'll see the B story focusing on like some kind of like character growth moment, and the A story mm-hmm. just be whatever the adventure is for the day. Chaos. Yeah. Oftentimes, the adventure. One of the things I like about Lower Decks is that oftentimes the adventure is very chaotically driven. Because um, mm-hmm. this one, like, it's Captain Freeman kind of taking center stage for a lot of this episode, which is kind of nice. Um, she thinks she can reboot this computer because she took an elective, I guess, um, in Starfleet. Um, and she's like, this computer is thousands of years old and it's fine. And it works like a Mac, like a, like, no, like a Dell desktop from the 20th <laughs> century. And it, it, and she, she inadvertently screws everything up. Um, yes. which makes the planet kind of go insane and crazy. Um, Ransom however get some really good standout moments i think ransom is very fun in general mm-hmm. um when he's looking at the artwork 
he's all of a sudden an art critic. It's, yeah, yeah. Ransom, I think, is one of those characters that has positioned himself really well um, in the show to be able to just like it's completely believable for him to be either an expert or have an interest in just an array of subjects. Like, there's just no anything. there's no one thing that like he could like say or come up with. That you'd be like, oh, why would he know about that? Mm-hmm. It's always kind of um, like, oh, uh, oh, that's really funny, or that, of course he knows something like that. Like, yeah. when, when, but when he's looking at the like the good art, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, your technique is really sloppy here. This is the good stuff. This over here is the bad stuff. And he's just like, just sloppy. <laughs> just like, <laughs> really funny. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. Again, with uh the B story, which I might focus on a little bit more, just because, like, again. The stuff that they're really is talk about has to do always with like character motivations and and you know improvements. Um, I think it's fun for Boimler's first away mission or first like lead uh, mission to to be something so like inane mm-hmm. as just switching power cores. And he's like super freaked out about it uh-huh. because like he's like these people could die under my watch. And they're like <laughs> you just. You're just switching the power cores, buddy. Not, You're okay. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. You got this. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it it definitely, like, I think, kind of harkens back to what we were talking about um, last time. Uh, mm-hmm. That Boimler just constantly gets in his own way, mm-hmm. uh, but is still incredibly capable. Like, yeah, he's, just, he's a good officer. Yeah. Yeah, like he's just he, all the all the parts are there. Yeah, uh, he just has no confidence and um, freaks out. It, it, it kind of takes Talin in this episode to to mm-hmm. really like give it to him. Talin has been an interesting addition to Lower Decks, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. We didn't really talk about her in the last episode we recorded, but she's um, she she was from season two, I believe. Um, at the end of season two, and now she's kind of become the fifth member of the show. Like she's yeah. the fifth Laura Decker. Yeah, um, and I, I mean it's it's cool. We Laura Decks kind of needed a Vulcan. Um, did it? I think every no, no, it did, it did. But now, now only now did it need a Vulcan. Okay, and yes, and here's here's kind of like my my um uh my whole reasoning for that. Mm-hmm. Um. Lower Decks positioned itself very early on as this, you know, parody, but also actual Star Trek show. Um, and it it included a lot of the same things that a Star Trek show did, mm-hmm. but only in reference or only in moments. And it focused on all that other stuff that you don't really see in Star Trek shows. Um, again, Lower Decks, namesake. Yes. Um, we do three seasons of that. We do three seasons of of this is Star Trek, but this is also kind of like here's all these references, here's all these other points. Here's you know, it's 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 Star Trek, but it's every Star Trek in one. Mm-hmm. It's you know, and and that leaves room for character growth, but it also you know focuses a lot of on on the spectacle, which is great. It's why we love. It's part of the reason we love Lower Decks. Yeah. Um, season four, like we said, is about growth. And the show to be able to like grow into its own um, in a way has started to act more like just a Star Trek show. That's a it's, good point. It's just Star Trek now. And that's, yeah. that's great. I love that. I think it's a great way to get the show because all the foundation of like how and what we can expect is there. All the references, all the, all that, that's, that's the world we've created. And now we're putting kind of like its own proper Star Trek show into that world, mm-hmm. um, which is why I think a Vulcan is is kind of a great choice for season four because it 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 kind of like grounds us into that like hey this is more proper Star Trek this is something that's like recognizable from Star Trek canon constantly in the show. You know, mm-hmm. here you have your more like subdued methodical character you know 
your Spock, your Data, your, you know, like whoever that gives that sort of like cold reasoning um, that a lot of Star Trek shows benefit from because you're able to kind of see the like contrast to sort of the ethos of like humanity and all that. Um, So I think, I think her inclusion this season makes a lot of sense and I'm really liking it because it's also not overt. It's not in your face. She's just another like cast member now. Um, She's probably the most normal cast member on the show. 100%. 100%. Because she's, she's just the Vulcan, right? She's not heightened. Yeah. She's not a no. heightened version of a character we've seen before. She's just a Vulcan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and she's being introduced as a character. It's not like she's just thrown in. Yeah, um, she is getting those moments to like grow and be part of the crew. Um, as as we'll see uh, when we jump to, to more episode discussions. Um, uh, but as far as this episode is concerned, um, no, I think it. I think it's great. I really like her inclusion. I really like her talking about like the death rate of mm-hmm. uh <laughs> and since uh, like their first mission with a new commanding officer. Mm-hmm. Um it's always higher than uh Boimler yeah. just completely again. We talked about the Boimler just all, always getting into his own head, uh mm-hmm. just being be, he is a capable Starfleet officer. We've talked about it before. He got promoted at the end of season one. It, it, he's good at his job. It's just he's really, he's really like super eager to please, and he wants to do the right thing all the time. Uh, he cannot screw up, and, and so he just gets in his own way, and oftentimes just trips over himself trying to do the right thing, but ends up making things worse a lot of the time. Uh, and that's what we kind of get here again uh, with these other ensigns, who are all characters we've seen before, which I I, I, yeah. I appreciated. I, I I thought that was nice. And like even he's just like, how am I supposed to get them orders? I was just like last week I was an ensign. I was their rank, and now I'm not. Um, and they're just kind of like, hey, we you know this is what we're doing. This is what we do, guys. We we can help you. We can we want to do this. Yeah. Um, Boimler also dies in this episode. And he gets to he gets to to see the like he sees uh, the koala he sees the koala he sees the koala <laughs> they referenced when um uh oh uh what's his name again uh well, we see the, the koala all the time in every season yeah no 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 but um uh God, the engineer uh, Phillips yeah. yeah no 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 yeah Phillips Who? um. No, I just love when when like we we start the show with a basket like so what what do you mean you die? It's like don't worry, it happens all the time. Yeah. It's what what did you see? <laughs> um, I I love the uh, so it's a Twin Peaks reference in the in 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 there. Um I've never seen Twin Peaks so I was I had to be told this. <laughs> um that this was in fact a Twin Peaks reference, but we see a, a room very similar to something that happened in an episode of Twin Peaks, I believe. Um and then the cosmic koala, which has been such, I have to tell you, Xander, mm-hmm. that if I were cre- if I were running Star Trek, mm-hmm. and the guy who comes up to me who I had hired to make an adult comedy Star Trek series, maybe the kind of like, the kind of like spinoff of a spinoff of a spinoff show, or the, mm-hmm. and the kind of incidental show, and I and the, he said to me, so I want the god of the star trek universe to be a cosmic koala and i want everyone who who dies to see it and i want that to be hard canon i'd probably think he was joking and so i think it's 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 incredible that just canonically in a show that's set that is set in the same world as deep space nine Mm -hmm. voyager next generation discovery it, there is a there is a cosmic koala, Strange New Worlds, Strange New Worlds, all these shows, and even Strange New Worlds, the Star Trek, the Star Trek Strange New Worlds episode has the cosmic koala in the credits. <laughs> yes. It's there. Oh, um, it's incredible that like now that is great. hard. That is hard canon. That the Star Trek universe, that one of the gods in the Star Trek universe, is a cosmic koala. I. Uh... 
it's one of those things that like Q would love. Q you know, probably knows it. Q knows them. They hang out, you know. <laughs> yeah, they hang out. <laughs> it, it is it is it is fun. I love that um Lower Decks has such a great ability to not take itself seriously. Yeah. Um, which I think has been a point of like, I don't know if contention, uh, or even if it's a flaw. I I I just think it might might be a um a delicate point. <laughs> yeah. Uh with kind of new trek in general. Um where it's like, hey, where's that balance of us being kind of silly sometimes? Yes. Uh, and sometimes being too serious. You know, I think the uh, the musical episode of Strange New Worlds did a great job mm-hmm. with being able to, like, balance that. Um, and it's it's like I can point out one episode in a different, you know, New Trek series. And I can point out an, an entire four seasons of, mm-hmm. of a different show. Um I think that's one of the reasons I think Lower Decks feels so much like Star Trek is, is just because like, it's, it's, it's just, sometimes it's just silly yeah. and that's, and that's fine. It doesn't change the stakes and it doesn't change how serious other moments are. It's just like, bro, it's a cosmic koala. That's it. That's, that's the, that, that's the punchline. It just exists. One of the things that I really appreciate about strange new worlds, just in general, and I've talked about this before, but this idea that it's not afraid to, bring in <clears throat> the sillier elements of star trek and as you were talking about mm-hmm. with like new track <clears throat> excuse me um the the this isn't a problem with new trek but a lot of, but they all come from to start discovery and start to discovery positions itself very early on as a, as a very serious show yes. um we're going to take this really seriously and because all the shows that came after were they were bouncing off of that tone so they they wanted to kind of ape that and be that but if you go back to the 60s, the first episode of the of that aired, that was the man trap. The first the second pilot, the uh, where no man has gone before, has the Enterprise go to the edge of the galaxy where there is a barrier that prevents any ship from going through it. Sure. Uh, and is shocked with strange energies, not even named strange energies. That turns the helmsman into a godlike being. That's the yeah. plot of the episode. And that's silly. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, but like, that's also stuff you didn't get when Star Trek The Next Generation wins in the 90s, right? Because mm. even in the 80s, we still got the naked now, which is a silly episode of Star Trek. But as it went into the 90s, it became more of a prestige drama. And we well, we still got sillier episodes. Mm. One of them is even referenced in one of the Deep Space Nine silly episodes is referenced in this episode. Um, and we get, so we, we still get silly episodes, but like we don't get this kind of weird, unexplainable uh, cosmic uh, adventure that the six, that 60s sci-fi really like birthed mm-hmm. um, because 60s sci-fi is very different from 80s sci-fi, which is very different from 90s sci-fi. Um and what I like about Strange New Worlds is that it really brings back that kind of silly 60s sci-fi sensibilities yes. of let's because we remember there's an episode where Ransom gets hit with strange energies and becomes a yeah. godlike <laughs> being. And like that's I was really excited about that. And we're uh, bringing back we're bringing back that silliness back to yeah. Star Trek. Even Discovery to their credit, season four went to the galactic barrier. Mm-hmm. Like regardless, yeah. like the Galactic Barrier is, uh, it, it it's stupid. It exists. It exists, but it's stupid. <laughs> it exists, Why? But it's how stupid. is there? How is there a barrier um, that encircles the galaxy? Can't you just go over it? <laughs> See, this is this is part of this is part of my thing, and uh, it's it's part of why I really love the crossover, um, with uh, Lower Decks and Strange New mm-hmm. Worlds, um, which I think we should talk about at some point. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, just put a pin in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe we'll just reference back to it the entire, like, season. Um, part of the reason I liked it so much is because I think it really, whether it was the intention or not, really gave Lower Decks legitimacy within the Star Trek canon. 1,000%, yes. And really went, hey, guys, it's not just our, like, cartoon 
this is this this has characters and materials that are are part of the future of Strange New Worlds. Yeah. And, it's kind of what the, it's kind of what Ahsoka is doing for Rebels right now. I know you I know you don't really yeah. like Ahsoka, but like there's <laughs> a, there's a kind of legitimacy that happens when you see characters from mm-hmm. animation become live action. Yes, um, yes, that definitely. shouldn't necessarily be the case, but it is. <sighs> but it is. It's unfortunate, yeah. but it is. Um, so that's part of the reason I like it so much is because now Lower Decks feels like it has more influence. Yeah. Lower Decks, in, in as far as like Star Trek is concerned. So we have Strange New Worlds, and we have Lower Decks, and we have media seeing that it's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that it, you know, and I'm I'm really kind of hoping that like what, what the first season of Discovery did in its, you know, like here's the tone of a very serious drama mm-hmm. um, in the Star Trek world. Uh, which is is fine. You can do that. Like I, I'm not I'm not knocking it because it chose to go in that direction. Yeah. Um, what I am knocking is the influence it had in a Star Trek show after that. Yeah, especially Picard. Especially Picard, which which has been <sighs> good, but also like I have a lot of those same issues with Picard. Yeah. Um. Especially because he did come from a show that was kind of silly. <laughs> yes, it, it's uh, really weird. It's really weird. Yeah, it's like it, it, this is the same universe, you know. Let's things can still uh, things exists. can be silly. Um, things can yeah, be silly. Uh, I I think it's just it's one of those things where like I'm hoping that what this is doing, what Lower Decks and Strange New Worlds is doing, will maybe have the same reflective impact that discovery did in sure. whatever is now created um and i don't mean that in like hey star trek needs to be comedies now mm-hmm. it, it, it's no star trek should be able to have that balance and be kind of silly which is why you know we love it so much it's part of the reason and then you know you have one episode with you know hijinks and the next episode is a a, a deeply like moving you know call to to action on some kind of like issue we're still faced with today you know it, mm-hmm. it it's just it's 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 being able to you know sort of romanticize about the future um which we need more of it's too yeah, much dystopia um there's a lot of there's, man there's a lot that i would it's not for this forum, but there's a lot that I could say about Picard that I I, I wish we could. Um, mm-hmm. But can I bring it back to to? Yeah, yeah. We we went on next. a wild tangent here. A good tangent, not a wild. Good tangent. tangent. A good tangent. <laughs> um, to bring Young it back wild and to, free. To, to lower decks, though. Uh, mm-hmm. This episode, um, I think what I think even from the get, you felt something different about this season of lower decks. Uh, because of what happened with Strange New Worlds, um, mm-hmm. because you kind of felt like, oh, this isn't just the the side Star Trek show anymore. This is this is the next Star Trek show. This is essential mm-hmm. watching. If you're watching Star Trek, this is essential watching. Um, and I don't think you ever felt that way here. And you're you're correct about and you you repeat basically repeating what you said in the last episode, which is that the this season is all about growth. It's but it, the, our characters have grown. We've got a new character, and the show has grown into a, into a place of, of prominence mm-hmm. within the Star Trek canon. Um, and I, I, God, I hope we get seven seasons. <laughs> oh, I, I really do. I, yeah. At least, at least six in a movie. At least six um, in a movie. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's it's wild. I was uh, I saw season three of Strange, uh, not Strange, of uh, Lower Decks, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay. Oh, season four is approved. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I just expect, I'm I'm just, every every time a season ends, I'm like holding my breath going, we're getting more, right? Yeah. Like yeah. this is, we're still, we're still getting seasons, right? Um, and uh, I'm really, I think, more confident than I was in previous seasons of the future of this show with this season so far. Mm-hmm. Because it's really saying, hey, we definitely have more story to tell. Yeah, um, and, and it helps because like it is episodic, like uh, like Star Trek uh-huh. shows of old, and so you can constantly just keep doing new things and things like that, and you get your reference heavy stuff. Again, there's a lot of 
good references in this yeah. in this episode. Um, but what's become so interesting is that the show, I think people misconstrue the show a lot uh, to be like, this is the reference show, but it's not. There's so many good characters that you just fall in love with after a while. Um, we haven't even talked about the C plot. Oh, which God. is Tendi, Rutherford, and Mariner thinking they're being hazed. Oh, uh, wait. Is that this episode? That's this episode, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I forgot about that. So, talking about silly, because oh. they, for some reason, the Cerritos has the Move Along Home box <laughs> from Deep Space Nine in their cargo hold? Why? How did Why they not? get that? Why do they have that? I don't know. Maybe they picked it up. While they were there, <laughs> and a Betazoid and a Betazoid gift box, uh, yep. which we haven't seen since uh, early days of Next Generation. Um, there's even an inner light, uh, an inner light satellite, which I guess implies there's more than one out there in the galaxy. I, I mean, yes, yes, I think, yeah, yeah, it's exactly what it implies. And, and um, the, the, the gift box gets hit with it. He's like, I just lived the whole life. I miss my family. So the, 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 the great part about this is that this is, if I remember right, they're in a C class, right? They're in a, uh, you mean the Cerritos? Yeah. But it's a California class. Okay. California C class, whatever. Um, <laughs> so we're not even talking about like, what is by and large, like the most important fleet or most important ship on the fleet either. No. Um, and it has all this stuff. Yeah. It's just, I just, it's just picked them up, I guess. Yeah. It, which really like in a, in a larger lens is like, mm -hmm. wow. Star Trek, like those crews really are just picking up everything they find. Oh yeah. They're, they're, they're picking up some, some weird shit. Um, I, I really like, that when they 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 because they believe they're being hazed by this by this lieutenant um by this uh, upper grade lieutenant and because they have to scan one by one this all these isolinear chips within mm -hmm. this room uh so they decide to get him back and yep. in doing so set a trap that he would be in the in the game um and when they realize that he was trying Trapped he said that he was trapped as a child in the same game <laughs> oh. uh, for hours. They decide to, to quickly dismantle it, and Rutherford has to go through the game, and it was very funny. The the fact that Rutherford knows all the answers to is mm -hmm. is perfect. He likes um, speed running the game. He's yeah, just like, oh, I just move along home. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta um, eat everything. Yeah, I think I think the episode does a really good job of um kind of keeping you on your toes of like, are they being hazed? Are they not? Yeah. Like, is this yeah. legit? Is it not? Star, Star Trek officers wouldn't do that. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they would. I feel like and they definitely would. It's kind of nice to see that like, you know, Mariner, Rutherford and Tendi on an adventure. I feel like the season has really split them, split up the, the main four in, in yeah. better, more interesting ways. It's not mm -hmm. always Rutherford and, Tendi and Mariner and Boimler. It's now it's the it's three of them and Boimler's yeah. on his his own adventure. Or yeah, it's or, yeah, they're making uh, a really good use of the cast. Yeah, and I, I think that it, it's really nice because we get to see them as friends, just um, yeah. without having to be in their own little groups or just together. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, character growth isn't only just, you know, these like big moments or these big like arcs. It's, you know, small things like, hey, the three of us were getting hazed as like new mm -hmm. new officers, um, which is which is really cool. I, I think it was really fun to kind of like we I think this kind of like harkens back to just kind of like, you know, being silly, having like just the 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 like slice of life part of Star Trek. Yeah. Um, which has always been a lot of fun. Uh, I don't thought really of, like really yeah. get much anymore. Yeah, I was I always I always loved kind of seeing the uh um you know the mess hall and the the bar and mm -hmm. kind of like the whole like oh we're just having a conversation, oh this is just you know us catching up on something, we're hanging out. Um that's it's always it's always nice to kind of see that interlaced and be like, yeah. oh right, they they live 
here. They live on this ship. This is, you know. I I think it's incredibly funny to me that since Next Generation, every ship has had a bar. Right? Not just a mess hall, a bar. No, it's a bar. And uh, considering that, like, anything you could get from the mess hall in a replicator, you can get also, like, replicate like a bar any drink can also be replicated Mm -hmm. like there's no there's no need for a bar it really is just a like and the only the only ship that didn't have a bar was archer's enterprise um they had they had a proper mess hall and i find that i I find strange new world's inclusion of a bar very funny because eventually that bar will have to be stripped out (laughs) and made into a bare bones mess hall yep Yep. (laughs) Because they were they were losers, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I really, I really like this episode, but I want to move into the next one because yes. I really yeah. like the next mm-hmm. one. It's so good. It's yeah, so this good. one is so far my favorite of the season. I yeah, I I really really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was so, nice. So- it was nice seeing kind of like the girls on their own mm-hmm. thing. So we're going to move into something borrowed, something green, which is our first time ever seeing Orion. Mm -hmm. We've never seen the planet Orion before. We've never seen Orion. And again, it goes back to what you were saying of like, we're seeing Orion in the comedy Star Trek show. This is canon. This is the (laughs) canonical first appearance of Orion that we are seeing. Which is so funny because if any other Star Trek show does Orion... They will it have to, to look be back this. At this, and it they'll has be like, "To be this, like, do we just do the same thing they did? Do we just do pirates? And be like, yeah, I think we just do pirates because, <laughs> like, there's the there's the three Orions that like swing in with like their 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 rapiers and like, yeah. oh, your Majesty, you've returned. <laughs> <laughs> they have there's, to do that. There's so many elements. There's so many elements of the Orion world. You've got, you know." Obviously, the whole like uh, faction system, and they're mm-hmm. all in pal- like palindrons being taken mm-hmm. around, uh, and and the the swashbucklers, and you've also got like the the CD underworld clubs, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just it's so it's such a complete mishmash of like every type of like CD underground. <laughs> I really like it. So this is my favorite episode of the season. Uh, this is a tendy. This is a tendy focused episode um, where she, she, Mariner, and uh, Talyn go to Orion because her sister has been not ritualistically kidnapped, but actually kidnapped because there's a difference in Orion culture. Um, and because she's going to get married, and uh, I found this one to be a lot of fun, especially because we get to see. Tendi, I really like when we get to see Tendi, Orion Tendi, mm-hmm. like the 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 mistress yeah. of the winter constellations Tendi, yep. uh, doing the drinking murder game where the the creature is gonna kill, gonna like stab them. Yeah, and there's there's been like a lot of moments throughout the last you know few seasons mm-hmm. of you know Orion Tendi, mm-hmm. um, especially that one episode with her and Mariner. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're we're, fi- yeah. we're first find out that she's the mistress, the w- mistress of Anticonstellation. Yeah, yeah. Where they go and get yeah. uh, the the box, I think, for uh, um, Cat Lady. <laughs> yes, the box for the for box. Dr. Anna. Yes, mm, that turned out to just be a box. <laughs> it's just a box. It's just a box. <laughs> what yeah. they cared about was the box, not the insides. Uh-huh. Um, and then we get a little bit of it in the Deep Space Nine episode yeah, because Tandy meets right. another yes. Orion in Starfleet. Yeah, and it, it, there's definitely like enough there to be like, oh hey, she has this past, and to finally kind of see it explored and really see it like, oh, we just get to figure out. It's no longer this mystery. It's no longer the kind of like, oh, she's got some secret backstory. It's just mm-hmm. here it is. This is what it's about, um, and it's great. Yeah, she was going to be an assassin. She's so she's so effortlessly good mm-hmm. at just being a badass um which is awesome and i think i think a i think uh, again this is the this was the proper time to introduce that backstory yeah um i think different scenes would have had a, a way more different way of i need i need more adjectives um <laughs> uh of like showing 
this backstory mm-hmm. because the characters were different. Yeah, and and this is great. Mariner is so supportive, but yet also so like I'm kind of like gonna let you do your thing, and I'm gonna stand back and get stabbed in the shoulder every and get stabbed in the time. shoulder three times. I, uh, it's incredible. It's an incredible joke when she's just like, "Why? How in the same place?" Great gag. Great um, gag. She so Tendi had said in a prior season of uh, this kind of like sweeps into Strange New World and the Strange New Worlds crossover too. But this uh, Tendi has like talked about how like Orion there are Orion stereotypes um, mm-hmm. when and like you know not all Orions are pirates. Someone has to build the ships, or not all Orions have pheromones and. Uh, or like the pheromone thing is not real. Uh, I think she right, says in yeah. the prior season, uh, <laughs> and they're even just like, "Oh, the pheromone thing is it like." Uh, Mariner says to Talyn, "Oh, the pheromone thing's not real because they need to explain how Starfleet captain was wooed by a Orion <laughs> girl." Turns out the pheromone thing is the pheromone real. It's real, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and there are pheromone junkies <laughs> in the Orion uh, people that are just sex dungeon, but with for pheromones. They really, they they really gave Orion some some fun, like just background that they could have yeah. they could have made so much more serious. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's enough there that if a different show wanted to go in and did want to make it serious, they can. Oh, absolutely! Because all of those things, all the elements they introduced, while like kind of lighthearted. I can see taken in like a dramatic spin in any other show. Yeah, I really appreciate. I really appreciate them giving the leeway to let Strange to let uh, Lower Decks do this. Uh, mm-hmm. Be like, we're going to define what or what the planet Orion is. We're going to define what the people on this planet are are like, and they did it in a way that both works for their show completely, one hundred percent, and works for the uh for for any show that wants to do it again mm-hmm. so if strange new worlds probably wouldn't do it but like a future show something like that yeah. if someone wanted to go in there and go do orion they can they can find like the seedy underbelly they don't need to mm-hmm. see the like the because tendies is like oh we're barely top five ruling families of all of orion um so like you don't have to do that side of it you can do the underbelly side of it and you can even there's even a way that you can like look at Orion through a darker lens um, mm-hmm. and not have it be so lighthearted. Um, but even so, like I think the challenge, I think the fun challenge of it from now on, if anyone wants to revisit it is to make it look like we've seen it here in yeah. any way. And I'm yeah. so excited and so happy that we got to, we got we got it here because if we got it anywhere else, it would look so different. And this gives it yeah. a lot more character. This gives it a lot more fun. Um, like remember, like Enterprise when Enterprise first introduced the Orions, um, and that was like the big reveal. It's like the women are in charge of the Orion uh, mm-hmm. of the Orion Syndicate, um, and like they're all <laughs> like Orion slave girls, and the men are pheromoned and blah blah blah. And like that was all from Enterprise, and. And if we had done that, it would be like this kind of like we'd see like the sexy air, the sexy like planet with these with these women subjugating the men and blah blah. But right, here, yeah. But here it's like this lawless planet of pirates, uh, and it just makes it a lot more fun that way. No, no, it definitely does. Um, I think the way in which they put their let me think about it. I think the way in which in which women are are leaders or in sort of like in charge in whatever faction throughout the trip in Orion was so mm-hmm. well done. Yeah. There was there was no like allusion to, you know, really stereotyping or doing kind of like what you said and have, you know, this like oh, all the men are controlled kind of thing. You know, uh, Tendi's parents, I think, were a great example. Yeah. Um, the mom's just like, okay, here the other dad's like, all right, cool, see ya. <laughs> the coolest dad. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think a lot of it was just, it was fun. It was just fun seeing like 
badass and kind of like the interpersonal relationships with everyone um tend to get that like spider drinking game mm-hmm. you know be like okay cool uh do you do you want to do like brunch it's like <laughs> <laughs> I, one of the things i noticed in that drinking game by the way mm-hmm. uh the animation budget is bigger this season by yeah, quite a large yeah. margin that i didn't realize there's and we'll see it in the, actually in the next episode too uh, which mm-hmm. we're not going to talk about today, but um, we there's a moment where like Mariner, like after she gets stabbed and she like brings herself up and she's she's so animated in a way that I haven't actually seen a character mm-hmm. on Lower Decks because Lower Decks is computer animated; it's not hand drawn, right? Um, and which is there's no shame in that. Um, mm-hmm. It was just kind of a fact there, but like the way it's moved, like it's very clear that the animation budget for this season has been bumped up a bit. Uh, to give mm-hmm. it a more fluid, uh, a lot more fluid movements that make it feel a little bit more, um, more like it's too, like it's hand drawn and less like it's draw- like it's computer animated, which I really mm-hmm. appreciate. Yeah, it definitely seems like they're taking or they have taken more time with this season. Yeah, um, probably a bigger team as well. Uh, probably, which is which is great. I think I think the 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 show definitely looks cared for. Um, I think kind of like the praise in general, which I hope we keep we we just continue giving. Uh, but mm-hmm. I think the praise in general for Lower Decks this season um, is completely indicative of that. It's completely indicative of of the the jump in quality that this season has had. Yeah. Um, not to knock the other three seasons, I think they're all really good. I think it it it, it in in all is such a good show. I just think it's really weird that this show that like we're very well acquainted with all of a sudden hits us back to back to back yeah, with just all these great episodes, amazing writing, um, you know, fluid animation, great voice acting, uh, these like really fun stories, all the character arcs. And then we're just sitting here going like, wow, we get to really just, enjoy and know that we're enjoying this season as it comes out you know you're you, right you, it, it you hits look different back so this much season. it does yeah it, it well and i don't necessarily know what it is altogether because i liked the last season i think season three probably isn't its strongest but like this season i was i'm watching this and i'm just like like you know the star trek universe logo with the cerritos mm-hmm. going and making the delta yeah. like that hits different this season. Like I'm excited. I'm like, oh, the Cerritos. Oh, yeah. the the music. Oh, what's gonna be in the theme? What's gonna be in the intro today? <laughs> oh, the whale probe. That's exciting. Like, you know, all these things are really mm-hmm. are it's it's so interesting watching having watched Lower Decks for four seasons now and and looking at this season specifically and being like, there's just it's like it's got a second wind. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And I'm. I can't. I cannot wait for. And I, it's going to happen. I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to happen. Um, but I cannot wait for the Cerritos as a ship to enter into the greater discussion of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I did it again. The greater I did what? It again. The great. I said the greater discussion of Star Wars. I meant the greater discussion oh, of Star Trek. Oh, you said Star Wars. Uh, what is it's with okay. me today? Um, I forgive you. I'll just yeah. burn you. No, I appreciate it. Um, eight eight lashes. Eight lashes. <laughs> um, um. Yeah, no, I, I can't wait uh, for it to join that greater discussion when people are like bringing up Star Trek, where they're like, oh, hey, here's a, let's talk about the ships or let's mention this or let's, you know, mention characters or like episodes or moments, you know? And the yeah. same way that people talk about, you know, the enterprise and then mm-hmm. you know you have discovery uh it's like oh yeah the cerritos i really appreciate <laughs> there's a there's so one of the things that was really interesting watching was the finale of star trek picard season three and mm-hmm. how they're talking about like the entire fleet is going to be at frontier day and what was interesting about that is that the end of season three of star trek lower decks i believe was the was when the Texas class ships tried to destroy the Cerritos 
and all the California class ships, like the entire fleet of California yeah. class ships came to yeah. the rescue, um, which was incredible because there's like the USS Burbank and the USS San Fernando <laughs> and the USS Monterey. And you're like, hell yeah, baby. Look yeah. At all that. Um, and what, and what's really great was really interesting about that is that when Picard season three ended, everyone, like there were a lot of talk online about like, where was the California classes? Mm-hmm. It's not that many years in the future from from where Lower Decks is. Where were the California classes? And like the answer was they didn't think about it. And no. I I love that the fans are though. I love that yes. the fans are already like, where's the California class ships? Let's see some live action California class ships. Mm-hmm. No, it's 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 great. It's great to kind of see like everything expanded and the the fans really like grab onto it and mm-hmm. really see it as media to be like, I care about this. Yes. I want more of this. I want, you know, it's a uh, uh, Star, Star Trek is just like, there's so much. It's such like a big, the Federation is huge. Yeah. There's so much of it. Um, You have your admirals, you know, so you have to really pick and choose what story do you want to tell. Mm-hmm. And you're going to choose the more important, the larger ships that to be like, oh, this really gets to encompass everything, you know? Yeah. Um, and the fault with that, that Lower Decks has just kind of fixed, uh, is that it's not rounded. Mm-hmm. You know, you only really get to see a section of it, you know? Um, I think it's, I think, oh, this is going to be a really weird comparison. Do it. <laughs> Lower Decks is the Parks and Rec to the West Wing. Holy shit. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that's that's it. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's the same show. Yeah. It's just one has a more comedic bent to it. Yeah. And, but like there's it- a there's such an earnestness. Like Mike McMahon is such a good show, is a really good showrunner. He's a really good writer. He's got a really good team. Yeah. There's an earnestness to this comedy. It's never punching down. It's always no. laughing with, and it's always, it's always strengthening Star Trek canon when it wants to, playing with Star Trek canon, and uh, and through the comedy, has elevated these characters to the point of, you know, think about the cheers when. When Star Trek, when 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 the panel for Strange New World season two announced that it was going to be crossing over with Boimler and Mariner, think about the yeah. cheers. Like, yes, we love Boimler and Mariner just as much as we love Kirk, Spock, and mm-hmm. Picard. We want to see them cross over with char- other characters we love. And to be honest, I I don't think any of the characters you mentioned would have gotten this big of a response. I don't think so either. There's a it, it, yeah. I, I don't because the thing yeah. is like we've we've seen it and and unfortunately this is the big no I don't I want to want to say this is the big problem with Star Trek I want to say this is like maybe one of my bigger issues with Star Trek that Lower Decks addresses mm-hmm. um and that's that we kind of gotta let go it's of of just everything of a lot uh discovery um did some of this yeah and i think it's just we we have to be confident that new characters in this world can be just as compelling just as good as the the characters we've known and loved for so long yeah and Strange New Worlds, I think, is a great medium point in that. Yeah. And that introduces a lot of a crew we've never met before that we have no connection to. And then, you know, five characters or four characters that we're like, oh, these are ones that we know their future versions of. That's my my issue with season two of Strange. One of my issues with season two of Strange New Worlds is there was too much Kirk. Yeah. I just don't I don't think there needed to be that much Kirk. Um, yeah. I think you're. I think you're right. There's been a lot of talk with about Star Trek Picard um, because of 
the the change in direction it took in its third season um, to kind of be this this next generation reunion show. And I when you know there's been a lot of talk about how like you know it never should have abandoned those new characters for the older characters. It's the only time that I've disagreed with that though. I don't mm-hmm. think Picard as a show should have ever been structured to be about something new. I mm-hmm. think yeah. everything else should have. Star Trek Picard mm-hmm. should have been that kind of reunion show, bouncing around the galaxy, talking to yeah. all the revisiting all the friends that we made along the way. That kind of like last hurrah that season three was should have always been what Star Trek Picard was. Because the 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 shows that should do something new are the lower decks, are the discoveries, are the Starfleet Academies, even Section 31. Mm-hmm. Um the the movie coming out next year supposedly coming out next year supposedly um, i i feel like i've heard that for like three years now right so like the the thing so like if you're going to do a show and that's kind of where like i kind of fall on i kind of i'm kind of teetering on whether or not i want the proposed star trek legacy um show where it's like yeah i want a new show set within the 24th within the 25th century on a new enterprise with mm-hmm. captain seven and Raffi. Uh, because I like some of those characters and we get the, we get to meet new characters, mm-hmm. but also I would, I also want new and I would rather you do something new rather than do that. I think legacy, yeah. it kind of is like strange new worlds where you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. Right. Right. Um, I just, uh, unfortunately I feel like a lot of it is that it feels like you need to give, one you need to have like one established character from a show to give this new show like legitimacy yeah and it's like that's not it's not the case you don't have to do that like for example i loved seeing um you know kind of the the strange new worlds cast sort of be introduced in discovery Mm -hmm. um but that was because i you know (laughs) <laughs> it it brought back that sense of like star star trek that I that i liked well sure at that point though i didn't really like anybody on this on the discovery cast yeah exactly so it's like yeah i so i'm saying this because i understand because there is a point there is a point to having you know these like old characters and new characters to kind of like you know balance everything but i don't i don't think like that argument is enough I think yeah. it worked in Discovery because Discovery was working. Yeah. And I think instead of giving it legitimacy, it was trying to salvage something. To be fair, season two, I think, is the best season of that show. Yeah. And and, and I think it, I think it definitely was like improving and going in a direction. I'm not a fan of the jump in, in time, but I think it, you know, it, it was giving a, a a direction to it that it didn't have. And it yeah. kind of was like, hey here's a little like shot to like take you somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so it's weird because like, I, <laughs> I've been arguing both sides of this. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I kind of did which, too. It's we're, yeah. we're, I think we're kind of in the same vein of like, there's merit to both sides of the, of the yeah. coin here. Um, we both like, I think what's so great about, about this era of Star Trek, just in general, kind of mm-hmm. like just the cap off. Yeah. What I think we're dancing around is that, you you can very much have your new and have your old. Mm-hmm. You can have your lower decks, your discoveries. You can have your strange new worlds. You can you can do you can do it. You can do both. And if Paramount Plus doesn't go under like it look like it honestly sounds like it's doing, um, yeah. then we can keep expanding Star Trek to give us a Star Trek legacy, a Star Trek discovery, a Star Trek mm-hmm. uh, Strange New Worlds, a Star Trek Lower Decks, a Star Trek Prodigy. Well, Prodigy is more. Prodigy is yeah, also uh, in the middle, kind of. Yeah. Because of Gainway and Voyager. Yeah. Stuff. But um, I think that you can. I think what's what's been really nice is that at one point it did feel like there was a Star Trek for everyone. Mm-hmm. If you wanted a comedy, you watched Lower Decks. If you wanted a prestige drama, you watched Picard. If you wanted a kids show, you watched Prodigy. Like, yeah. And and I don't think it feels that way right now because of how many shows are ending at this point. You know, Prodigy mm. was canceled. Picard is mm-hmm. over. Discovery ends next year. Um, so it kind of just feels it doesn't really feel that way. But I think it could again. 
and I yeah. hope it does. I hope we. I hope it. I hope so too. I hope it's it's kind of collapsing in to expand again. Yeah. Or or if anything, I hope that we get you know maybe more focused you know shows. Maybe we do have that. Maybe we do run that whole gamut, but we run that whole gamut in three years instead of all in one. You know. Mm, yeah. Good point. There's the there's the other side of that where if if you know maybe we only have one Star Trek show with uh with more episodes that'd be nice I'd like more episodes yeah. yeah I'd be I'd be okay with that um I would love to see just a whole new I don't know I'm into it I would love to see a new uh just a new live action Star Trek that kind of tackles something different than what we've yeah. seen you know I'd love to see I think I'm the only person uh honestly. Um, you know, but I'd I'd love to see something with like, you know, high command and you know admirals and and kind of that whole West Wing. like va- I'd love to see West Wing. I want Star Trek West Wing. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want. Yeah, I'm with you. Give me give me a political drama. If we can have if we can run the gamut on all Star Trek things, give me a political drama <laughs> set in Star Trek. Um I, I I'm sorry. I've been binging that as secretary, and it, it's it's very much on my mind. That's okay. Um, um, okay. Oh, uh, Go for it. I just thought we could very quickly brush on the B plot of Boimler. <laughs> yeah, and, that's what uh, I was. I was so I was gonna Rutherford. go. Yeah. Um, so and back the to lower, tree. <laughs> to lower decks, Boimler and Rutherford. They they're having some friendship issues. They're you know classic oh. roommate roommate issues you know you mm-hmm. you kind of rub up and but they have a bonsai tree that they that they that they both love and they've got some holodeck time where they're gonna play mark twain and it's so funny just the <laughs> the mark twainism arguments that they have and the fact that they think <sighs> it would work yes with so, freeman and this other right. alien right. I, I wanted to mention this. I think while I was watching the episode, I was like, I need to bring this up on the podcast. Um, is that Star Trek is so wild and so silly. And this is kind of like that. It harkens back to this whole conversation we've had yeah. where the captain would hear this idea and, and think, go, let's try it. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And yeah, afterwards, she's like, why did you think this would work? But she agreed to try it. Yeah, she's in the outfit. She's she's into it, and it's like you can't blame them. You're you're in on it, um, and it it just it speaks to the whole thing of like yeah, because things like this work mm-hmm. in in Star Trek. It it I think if if something like this had happened in a different show, I think it would have worked. I think, think so would have been like yeah. There's <laughs> there's an interesting idea here also that. You know, you kind of get this like this this main character syndrome that's happened with Lower Decks, which I think is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, where it's like the 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 Lower Decks of the uh, of the Cerritos, the the, the our four main characters mm-hmm. are very good friends with the senior staff, right? Yeah, um, and that's that's not how the show started, and like that's how all these kind of shows like. You want you want your characters to interact and yeah, become friends, yeah. and you want the that's how storytelling works. I just I yeah. always found that really interesting that like these two lieutenant junior grades come up to the bridge and give this option, and the captain is like, "Yeah, okay, that sounds great," because she's friends with them. Yeah, and like not for any other reason, like anybody <laughs> else. If Tal guy, if Tal guy came up uh-huh. to the bridge and was like, "Hey, I, I think this is a good idea," she would not listen to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I miss Tal Guy. We don't see Tal Guy enough. We don't see Tal Guy enough. Um, yeah, I. It's weird because like I mean, there's definitely like less to talk about in this little section here. Mm-hmm. Um, because it, he eats it, the it bonsai is, tree and he leaves. Yeah, he eats the bonsai tree and leaves. It is. It is a very kind of like here's the gag, one and done. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 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 just it's so interesting because like yeah. It it like cements the friendship with senior staff. It like yeah. shows there's a little growth, like how like silly they are, and how they decide to like resolve conflict. Yeah. Um. 
And it's like, it's, 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 it's fun. It's just, it's fun. It's just like, we have a whole charged episode and here's just kind of like the silly little, like, what are, <laughs> and meanwhile, the Cerritos. <laughs> um, to round up the episode, I, yeah. I want to talk about uh, Tendi's, the resolution, which was that they find mm-hmm. Tendi's sister, Tyerica, which is incredible, Tyerica, um, <laughs> On a Raven class starship, which from from Star Trek Voyager, that's the ship that uh, Seven grew up on. Um, not the exact same ship, but the same type of ship. Right, but yeah. Um, and it's, I really like that this was a ruse because Tayarica didn't want to be the, win- the 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 mistress of the Winter Constellations, but she had to be after uh, Tendi left. And mm-hmm. there's this resentment of like, you left me to be this assassin uh, mm-hmm. because you want to go love your dream. Well, you, no one asked me what my dream was going to be. And I like that. It's this nice resolution to Tendi's story of like, I, it wasn't me. I wanted, I wanted to learn science. I wanted to go to Starfleet. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, to, I didn't want to be an assassin. Um, and I, I really like that, that kind of resolution, the conversation It's very heartfelt. It's very yeah. interesting. To Lynn and to Lynn, like to Lynn's arc of being like, you know what, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. send this to Vulcan. Yeah, no one needs to know about Orion culture. Yeah, it's fine. Which, which really, like, also kind of like speaks to her character and her growing in her friendship with, you know, both Tendi and 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 Mariner, and just yeah. having that, you know, well, yeah, that moment of humanity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and just being like, no, this is it's it's fine. Obviously, this is really important to you that I don't share this. Yeah, you know. Um, and she's Mariner right. You know, it's like how yes. <laughs> um, and she's right. Like, is it ethical to share a report when you don't have the consent of the subject? You know. Yeah. Um. So it's like it, it, it was. It was good. It was. It was a. I think it was a really strong moment. Um. I think for as much as I think we both enjoyed watching Tendi be a butt, uh, butt ass, a bass, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not her. It's something she does. Yeah, it's something it's she gets. She, she has is. the, she has the ability, but like who she is, is the like silly, emotional, like freaking out scientist that, you know, we've, we've seen grow with love. Yeah. She's um, a huge nerd. Yeah. And, it, and it's really it's, it's really nice it's to see that that her like come to terms with like yeah this is something that I do but it's not who I am yeah um, and to Erica even like coming to terms with the fact that like oh, okay yeah yeah uh, and like having that reconciliation between the two of them uh, was really important and it's nice that we for a character that we only got for like five minutes of screen time I felt an emotional catharsis between yes the sisters yes. Yeah, I think it was really well done. I think a lot of, I mean, Tendi obviously does a lot of the heavy lifting there. Yeah. Um, I think it was it was enough. It was enough to kind of like see, here's this character, here's this relationship. We we kind of we we get it, you know. Um, uh, and God, seeing the picture of like her swinging her husband through the yeah. threshold of the window. Yeah. Uh, I mean that's. <laughs> You know, that's, that's canon. This is it's canon this is culture. This is this is just. <laughs> I love um, your comment. This is culture. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 we've said it already, but I want to drive drive it home that the name to Erica T apostrophe Erica is mm-hmm. incredible, and the person who came up with that deserves a raise. <laughs> just incredible. I love oh. it. No, it's, um, it's great. All right. Well, anything else you want to bring up? No, no. I think I think we've kind of like filled in uh, our hour. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of tangents. A lot of a lot of good tangents. Hope you guys enjoyed. Mostly, mostly, mostly tangents. I think this episode. I think this episode was mostly tangents. Um, I cannot be stressed enough, though, that I really liked this episode. It was a really good episode. Yes. Yes. Um, both both lower decks and of the podcast. God, um, I'm making a shirt. It's culture. It's culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, the Star Trek font. God, that would look incredible. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it's, yeah. It's it's the show's great. Um, 
obviously we both share that sentiment. Yeah. Um, and I'm just really excited for more of it. I'm excited for the rest of this season. I think, I think this episode in particular paints a really like great picture of, of what to expect uh, yeah. from here on out. And I mean, so has everything else, but it's like, it's one of those things where it's like you start off the season and you're like, okay, let's wait till it really feels like it's kind of like settled into its, its season before we really have expectations. Yeah. Um, and by episode four, I'm like, this is it. This is just what the season is going to be like. Um, and I'm here for it. I'm all here for yeah. it. Incredible gag with Marina getting stabbed in the same spot every time. I love, I love how much you love that. I love it so much. Um, all right. Well, that'll do it, guys. So that's Star Trek. That's Fickner's Watch for Star Trek Lower Deck Season 4, Episodes 3 and 4. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Xander, thank you so much for joining me. Um, thank you for having me. Next time, uh, Travis should be feeling better. Uh, our, our co-host, Travis Alexander, he uh, has a flu, so he could not join us. Um, get, so get your flu shots, people. Get your flu shots, people. Um, all right, so that'll do it. Um, next time we'll be back probably in the next two episodes. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, until then, of course, find us on all the social medias at FicknerPodcast.com. There's a few shows. At this point, if you're watching, the strikes are over. Hallelujah. Uh, what does that beautiful future look like? Let me know. Um, and you can <laughs> check out but you can check out all the shows uh, that you probably need to catch up on at this point at, Fichtner, at FicknerPodcast.com, um, where well, I have I have linked to everything, uh, literally everything you could ever think to find as far as this podcast is concerned is on that website. So please check it out as well as if you'd like to support us financially at TeePublic or Patreon. Um, uh, that's linked below as well, but also on the on the uh, podcast website. Once again, FignerPodcast.com. Fignor Podcast on all the socials, FignorGuys at gmail.com. If you'd like to get in touch with us personally, I'm at BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. I also write for AtomicGeekdom.com. Uh, Xander, where can people find you? Uh, at Jack in the Box uh, on Twitch and across my socials. Very cool. Uh, and until next time, uh, yeah, until next time you see us, guys, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel. Very important. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. But until next time you see us, guys, live long and prosper.